All right, so we're going to get started. Um, a couple quick things. Um, one, you should have all received an email from me with your check-in time. Uh, I tried my best to accommodate whatever you guys asked for. I think everybody got their first or second choice. Uh, and if you didn't ask for anything, you got randomly assigned something. Um, so that's good. I also sent out kind of a weekly plan that uh, was an announcement that was in Canvas so that you kind of know where we're going. I've given you uh, the two things that we're doing this week, um, Lecture 203 and Lecture 204. Obviously, the actual videos haven't been posted because we're doing it right now. Um, but I also gave you exercise uh, 203 and 204 just so you kind of know what the roadmap is going forward. Um, I know that some of you emailed or had had problems with with connecting to the remote desktop or, or getting things to work correctly. Um, we'll sort through all of those during the check-ins this week. So if you feel like you know, you're missing something or something didn't work right, uh, we'll make sure you get through that. Don't worry about any late penalties. I'm not gonna assess anything um, just yet. So let's, let's make sure you get through it. That's what the check-ins are for. Um, today, uh, we're gonna build upon what you hopefully did in exercise 203. Um, and start to work both in the flat two-dimensional plane, but also we're going to bring some stuff up into 3D. So this is a little bit more of a, an actual live demo. Um, and so I'm going to uh, flip over right now and share my screen. So give me a second to do that. All right. Let me just rearrange things here a little bit. Got to get my setup correct. Perfect. Uh, okay, so you should all uh, be able to see my screen right now. And I've gone ahead and I've already logged into the remote desktop on the school machine. So what you're seeing is the remote desktop. If you haven't logged into that before, I'll just do a quick refresher. Um, you're going to, hold on, I need to get a uh, web browser up here so that you could see it. All right, you're going to go to idm.dvc.edu. So you type in idm.dvc.edu. And it's going to go through its standard authentication page. And then you should see the ability to log in to the ETLab01. When you click on that, uh, if you've installed the desktop client, it will go ahead and open up the desktop client, which is right here, um, which looks just like a uh, you know, Windows desktop. Hopefully that's working for you. If you, I know a couple of you emailed me with issues. I think they're resolved. If they're not resolved, um, let's make sure we talk today. Um, when I'm done lecturing, we'll talk. Uh, I want to make sure I have a list because I'll forward your names on to the IT department and see if they can sort out why you're having trouble getting access. But uh, I believe at least most of you were able to get access. So we can go from there. So um, on the remote desktop machine, a couple things to remember. Um, if you leave your remote desktop alone for a while, it will probably log you out, which can be a big problem uh, if you haven't saved your work. So we want to make sure that you save your work as you go. Uh, the other big piece of this is that you need to connect to your OneDrive folder so that you can actually save your work and then sync it to your home computer. So I've gone ahead and I've already logged it in. The reason that I logged it in is I actually I have a, a screen tracking so that it will show when I left click, it'll give me a little red circle. If I right click, it'll give me a blue circle. Um, and that kind of helps. It'll show the clicks on the side. And if I were to type something in, let's say that I went to Google, uh, down in the lower right corner of what you're seeing, it'll, it'll show what it is that I was typing into the computer. So that's good for now, but also really good for when I post the recordings a little bit later on um, on YouTube so that you'll be able to, to use those uh, as a guide and you can see what it is that I'm doing. So I went ahead and I already logged into uh, OneDrive because I needed to do that in order to set up these keystrokes and, and what have you. So my OneDrive is already logged in. If you haven't, you would come down by the clock in the lower right corner. There'll be a gray cloud with a slash through it. And you'll want to click on that gray cloud and it'll take you through a little prompt in the middle of the screen to actually connect to OneDrive. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've connected to OneDrive. I also have pulled up this exercise 203 page. This is what we're going to be working on today. Um, and so I'll refer back to it as we go through um, the, the course today. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up Rhino. I haven't opened it up just yet, so I'll double click on Rhino 7. And we'll give it a little bit of time to start up. All right, and so Rhino opened the usage statistics. I can go ahead and just say, okay. Now it brings up all the V-Ray toolbars. As I said on the first day, I don't need any of the, the sub toolbars. The only one I'm gonna worry about is the V-Ray all, this first one. And we can actually dock that. I'm just dragging it right down here and I'll dock it in with the rest of my toolbars. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this view so I can see everything. And now I have a blank document to start with. For today, I'm gonna to actually ask that you open up the floor plan that you drew in exercise 202. So if you haven't drawn it, we can draw it, draw it again fresh, but I'm not gonna have you guys watch me. I'm gonna concentrate on the new part of today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to file and then open. And you would be doing the same thing as me. And I'll go to my OneDrive folder and hopefully your folder is nice and organized. Mine's not the best, but I'll take it. I'm going to go into today's folder. I'm going to go into 202, which would be where my 202 is. And let's take a recent 202. Let's do that one, for example. Oh, here we go. 202 sample. That'll be a good one. And we'll load it up. And there is my basic floor plan. This, you may have gotten a little bit further than this. This will suffice for what we're trying to do today. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save as before I move on. So I'll go up to file and then I'll choose save as. And I'm gonna move it into the 203 folder. And we'll call this exercise 203. And it should be the spring of 2020. Uh, it's definitely not the spring of 2020. Apparently, I'm a couple years behind here. How about 2022? That's better. All right. So I have a fresh copy to work with. So this fresh copy of my floor plan, uh, just like we did last class, I'm working primarily in the top view. We can see it over here in the perspective view, but I'm working primarily in the top view. So I'm going to continue working in the top view. So let me double click on the viewport name top. That'll make that take up the whole size of the page for me. And at this point, I want to kind of go through and do a little bit of organization. So I have my floor plan drawn out. I'm gonna look over here on the right side and there's kind of a like a piece of pie. It's a red, white, and blue piece of pie. If I click on that, it'll show me my layers. And so right now I have a default layer followed by layer two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If I take layer two, for example, and I double click on it, I can actually change the name of this. So let's take layer two and change it to be floor plan. And I'll hit uh, enter or return to finish that. And so it's called floor plan. I can change the color that it is if I want to. Right now it's black. I could change the color, for example, to be red. The only color that I'd stay away from in Rhino is yellow because that's indicative of something that's selected and it'll completely confuse you. And let's move this whole drawing that I just did onto that floor plan layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection from left to right that completely contains my whole object. It's a good time to bring up the concept of left and right uh, selections. When you do a selection from left to right, it's going to select only objects that are completely contained within your selection window. So in this scenario, it would only select the door and the window because those are the only two objects that are completely contained. If I were to select from right to left, the opposite direction, it will select anything that this selection window uh, touches. So in that scenario, it's selecting the window, but it's selecting the walls, et cetera. So I could select from left to right. It's going to select everything. Or as long as I'm selecting the whole object, I can go, uh, oh, excuse me, that was right to left. I can go left to right uh, as long as I'm completely contained. There it all is. So it's all selected. It's highlighted in yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on floor plan and say change object layer. And that'll move my object from the default layer to the floor plan layer. 
which it is now. I can confirm that it's on the floor plan layer by turning off the layer and everything turns off. And when I turn it back on, everything turns on. So the next piece that I want you to work on is I want you to draw kind of a basic elevation of this side of the house. It would actually would be helpful if I had uh, another window over here. So let me go ahead and copy. I'm gonna type copy followed by enter. And let's see here, let's make this centered. So I'm gonna hover, let me turn on my snaps. They're not currently on. I'm gonna turn on end, mid and perpendicular snaps. And that will allow me to track from this point over three inches. So I type three and then quotation mark. What that did is it let me pick these windows from the center of those two windows. And I can come over here and I can snap to the center of this wall there. And that gives me two more windows in that wall. I think the original windows were a little bit bigger. It, it doesn't really matter what they look like. Uh, I just wanted there to be some windows there. So what I need to draw is I need to draw what the elevation view of these two walls would look like. So I can start with a line. I'm going to use polyline. And I could come down here a ways. It doesn't really matter where. And I could draw the base of this building. So it would go, that would be the first section. And the second section would be here. Now what I'm doing is I'm hovering over these corner points and then I'm moving my mouse down to create the line. Now I need to know the height of this wall. So let's say the wall is a generic eight feet. So I'll go ahead and type in eight apostrophe and then enter. And that gives me an eight foot wall. I wanna line up with that point there. We'll come over a little bit more. I'll line up with that point there. And then we'll come down there. Now I also need to draw that line that separates because this piece of the elevation is at a different plane than this piece of the elevation. So this is a little bit closer to me, this is a little bit further away. If we were doing AutoCAD, we'd worry about line weights. In Rhino, we're just worried about modeling, so that's good enough. Next thing I need to do is to draw the windows. So for your purposes, the windows could be any height. Um, this, this was kind of identified as a little bit of a kitchen, so the windows should probably be tall enough so that they're above where the countertop height is. So I'm going to do those at 42 inches. So this is a, it's a good opportunity to kind of sort out how, what's the best strategy for making these windows. So I could use the rectangle corner to corner tool. I could draw using the, the, the polyline tool. Either one of those would get me to a place. But what I need to do is I need to know where, where the bottom of these windows would be. So let's create a little bit of a guide. I'm going to come up here by 42 inches. And then I'll draw a line across. Then I'm going to draw another line. We'll start there again. I will go up uh, to six foot eight. Whoops. Now I created a, a point there in the middle. So I want to make sure that that goes away. And then we'll go up to a standard head height would be six foot eight. And I definitely drew these way more than eight feet tall. Let me come up here to eight feet. Yeah, that would be eight feet. So see, even I make mistakes. So that should be my eight foot line, not up here. So let's go ahead and trim that off. So I'm going to use the trim command. I can type in trim or I can go under edit and then choose trim. It's gonna ask me to select my cutting objects. That line there would be my cutting object. I'll hit enter. Select object to trim would be that, and it would be that. Alternatively, I could also, let me back up here, I could draw a box through those lines and trim them all in one shot. When I'm done, I'll press enter and that then ends. Okay, so now I need to draw what these windows actually look like. So I could use that rectangle tool. We can hover over the edge of this window. We can come down and hover over there and it's gonna create an intersection for me. And I can do the same thing from there and from there. And those are again, using my smart tracking to create that window. Same process, I'll use my rectangle corner to corner 
hover, set that point, hover and set that point, and then come to where they intersect. Hover and set that point, hover and set that point, and go to where those two intersect. Right there. Now these two pieces were just guides for me. So I can go ahead and select both of those and then press the delete key on the keyboard. And now I have just those two windows. So I could take those two windows. They happen to be the same as these two windows. So I could take those windows and I could copy them. So I'm going to go to edit. Or excuse me, I want to go to transform and copy. This is a good place to, to point this out. Transform copy is going to allow me to copy with a base point. Edit copy is going to just copy the objects. So I'm going to go to transform and then copy. Alternatively, I could type copy. And it's going to ask me the point to copy from. So the point I want to copy from, let's just pick this corner of the windows there. So you can see that I'm copying those two. Those are my new windows. Now I can use the smart tracking to hover over these windows, pull that down, and I could snap those two windows to be right there. So what I was able to do is I was able to draw kind of the basics of this elevation. We're not concerned right now with roofs or anything too complicated. We're going to work with just the very, the very fundamentals of this. So I have, a, I have essentially one wall with two windows in it and another wall with two windows in it. So at this point, it's time to actually start thinking about this a little bit more in three dimensions. So in order to start thinking about this in three dimensions, I want to kind of prepare my file so that it's ready. Now, this file luckily was already relatively prepared for me in that if I click on this segment of wall, it's a continuous segment that comes all the way around and joins to there. This segment of wall, likewise, is also a continuous wall segment. Now, some of you may have it where you drew extra lines, and so you'll end up with a, a set of lines that's like this, where they're not actually connected together. If that's the case, we want to go ahead and join them together. So I'll go ahead and select these. I'm going to hold down the Shift key on the keyboard and select those line segments. Once I've done that, I'll go up to Edit and then Join. And that'll connect these line segments together so that now they're all one segment. Now, I haven't joined them to down here, so I need to join those as, together as well. So that's selected. I'll hold down Shift and click on those two segments, those two segments, and that segment that ends. I'll go ahead and go to Edit and then Join one more time. And that's all now one complete line segment. This over here, like I said, is already a line segment. Sometimes people will run into trouble and they might have, let me see if I can uh, fake this well here. Sorry, I'm just trying to set this up. OK, so they might select this curve, and they might select this curve, and they might say, OK, I want to join those together. So I go up to Edit and then Join. Now, there's a problem here in that it's unable to join the curves because these two curves overlap. So I have this curve right there, and I have this curve right there. And so there's two line segments that overlap each other here. So that's problematic because I can't join the ends together because it won't become a continuous line. So let me go ahead in that scenario and I'm going to type explode. Or I can go up to edit and then explode. And I can choose one of those two line segments. So in this case, it's just the single line segment. And I'll go ahead and delete it. And then I can come back and select those. And in this scenario, when I go to edit and then join, it's going to say two curves joined into one open curve. That's exactly what I wanted. So let's go through and select the rest of these. All 
All right, those are all selected. I'll go up to edit and then join. And now this time it says 18 curves joined into one closed curve. So when I've joined those into one closed curve, now I know that they're a nice closed curve and are ready to actually extrude. So in both of these scenarios, I'm really ignoring the doors and the windows altogether. I'm concentrating on just the walls. So I have those walls ready. Let's go ahead and make those three-dimensional objects. I'm going to double click out of the top view. So I'm going to double click where it says top. And I'm going to double click into the perspective viewport. So I'll double click here into the perspective viewport. Hold on one second. Brooke asked a good question. She said, should the whole perimeter be joined? Um, it's not, in this scenario, it's not possible to join the whole perimeter because of the gaps where the doors are. So in this scenario, I can only get this segment and that segment because of, of the setup of the doors. If I had another door coming out, say right here, then I'd have three line segments. And it doesn't really matter for what we're creating, how many they are, but what we're looking for is the closed line segments. So this is closed, it goes all the way around. Same as this, it goes all the way around. So we're, we're trying to make sure they're closed line segments. So like I said, we're here. Now, I'd really like my building to go on its own layer, my 3D building. So let's go ahead and create a layer here under layer three for walls. Okay, so I've got walls. Now I need to, when I start drawing or when I extrude and create these, I want the, what I make to go on the walls layer. So I'm gonna change the active layer to be the walls layer. So see this check mark here next to default? I'm gonna move that down to walls. And now I have that as a check mark. That means whatever I create will be on the walls layer. So let's take this first wall segment and I'll select it. And I'm going to go ahead and create a surface from that curve. So I'm going to go up to surface and I'm going to go to extrude curve straight. Alternatively, I could type in extrude CRV, extrude CRV and hit enter. And what you're seeing is the, the beginnings of a three-dimensional object. Now, in this scenario, it's hard to tell, but this object is hollow. So if I were to just click, you can look in here and see that it's hollow, but it also doesn't have a top or a bottom on it, just the sidewalls. So rather than have to cap it later or add a top and a bottom, I'm going to delete that. When I do the extrude, so once again, uh, surface, extrude curve straight. I'm going to look at my command line, and it's going to give me some information. So the output is a surface. The direction is fine. I don't want to do both sides. It's only going up. Next option is solid. Well, in this case, I do want it to be solid. So I'm going to click on solid, and you'll see that it changes from solid no to solid yes. The other option right after it is something called delete input. So this is, do you want me to delete the curve that this extrusion is coming from? And in some cases, you may want to. For our purposes, that curve is already on the floor plan layer, so we can turn it off. We don't need to delete it. So I'm going to leave the delete input set to no. And so now I want to go ahead and specify the height. So in this case, the height of this or the extrusion distance should be eight feet. So I'll type eight apostrophe for eight feet. And then I'll go ahead and press the enter key on the keyboard. And that then creates a solid wall that's eight feet tall for this portion of my floor plan. I'm going to do the same thing with this portion. So once again, I'll go up to edit, or excuse me, I'll go up to surface, extrude curve straight, or I'll type extrude CRV. Now the options here have all should all stay the same. Oh, looks like solid is still set to no, so let's change that. And the rest of the options are okay. And I can specify again, eight apostrophe followed by enter, or I can actually snap to the height of this wall that's pre-existing. So I could snap anywhere on that height and it's gonna create another set of walls that are eight feet tall. 
So if I'm orbiting, which is again, I'm just holding down the right click, I'm right click and holding down, I can look at my object and I can say, yes, I've created a 3D object. Now, if you are working on this and you see this, and it looks kind of transparent, it's because you're working in a wireframe mode where we're actually seeing through all of my objects. So to change that, if you come up to the perspective drop down here and you click that little down arrow and you switch from wireframe to shaded, you'll then see a little bit better shading of your object. So I now have my three-dimensional object. It's, it's a pretty good time to save and make sure I don't lose anything. So I'll go up to file and then save. Remember, I already put it in my OneDrive. So when I choose save, we could actually look at OneDrive. Let me close that here. And you could see that exercise 203, 203 spring 2022 uploaded two seconds ago. So that means I have the saved version and everything is preserved in my OneDrive. So it's always a good idea to double check the system. So now that I have that, it would be really convenient to be able to get these objects here, these windows, onto these walls. So I'd like for this plan that I drew, or this elevation that I drew, to become three-dimensional as well. So right now, it's just flat on the ground, because that's where I drew it. So I'm going to use a command called Rotate 3D to get this standing up. So the first thing I need to do is to select the objects. So now I need to be careful when I'm making my selection. If I select from left to right, it's going to select everything. But notice it also selected those objects there. If I select from right to left, I can get almost the whole thing. And actually, I might be able to get the whole thing. There it is. And since it's everything the object touches, I'm able to select everything that's there. So that was a right to left selection. So now that I have that, I'm going to use the transform rotate 3D command. And I can access that by going to the transform menu and choosing rotate 3D. Notice it's not regular rotate. It's actually rotate 3D. Or I could type in rotate 3D. Now, this is different than a standard rotation. So let me show you a standard rotation first. If I had an object, let's say it's like that, and I did a standard rotation, if I went up to transform and rotate, it's going to rotate the object around a center of rotation. Right There's my reference. And it's only going to work in the flat plane. So if I move around here, we can see that it's just orbiting around in the flat plane. It's rotating around. Rotate 3D allows us, instead of picking a center of rotation, and get rid of that, I'm going to pick a line of rotation. So I click Rotate 3D, so Transform Rotate 3D, and it says Start of Rotation Axis. So my rotation axis in this sense is going to be the bottom of this wall. It's going to be right there. So I'm going to click here. That's the start of my rotation axis. And then it says End of Rotation Axis. I could pick this, or I could pick all the way to the end of the wall. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and click. So that is then a line that my lines, my curves are going to rotate around. It's an axis. Then it says angle or first reference point. So let's reference the top of the wall. And now you can see that as I start to move my mouse, it's actually rotating up. It's going up. And there'll be a point at which it kind of snaps and locks into place. There it is. And that's perfectly vertical. The alternative would be to go ahead and turn on ortho down here at the bottom. And then it's going to jump straight to 90 degrees. You can't pick anything in between. And there it is. So now my elevation is standing up. For those of you that took uh, 135 when we worked in SketchUp, we did something very similar where we rotated this up in space. So we could use it as a reference point. Now Rhino takes this a step further because we can actually take these curves and essentially throw them at the building and create new curves on the building itself, which is a really powerful technique. So that technique is called using the project command. So it's kind of like if we're using a projector and you put your fingers in front of it and you created a shadow and it would project that your fingers onto the shadow or onto the screen, the, the shadow of your fingers onto the screen. That's what we're doing here. But in order to do it, we have to be very careful about how we set up 
the projection to happen. If I were to go right here and say, okay, I want to project this object, I'll go up to uh, curve, curve from objects, project. It says select surfaces. I select surface. Okay, that's great. I hit enter. And it's going to say the projection missed the selected objects. And that's because the projection occurs using the viewport. So it's going straight through the viewport. So what I need to do is I need to switch my view. So let me double click on perspective. I need to switch my view into the front view. You could use the back view, that would work as well. But in the front view, this is directly in line with where it belongs on the object itself, right there. So if I initiate the project command here in the front view, the projection is going to go perfectly in line through my window onto my building. So by making sure that the front is active, see how it's highlighted in that light blue color, I can go up to surface and then project, uh, excuse me, curve, curve from objects, project. Alternatively, I could type project into the command line. It's going to ask me first to select curves and points to project. So I'm going to select this curve. I'm going to do this multiple times, though you could do it all in one uh, projection. So I've selected it. I'll press Enter to confirm. Then it says select surfaces and polysurfaces to project onto. So I need to select the surface right there that I want to project onto. So I click the surface. Now, the important thing is that I'm doing all of the selection only in the front view, not in the perspective view, not in the other views. It's all happening in the front view. In fact, I could double click and make the front view active so I don't accidentally do it in a different view. I'm not going to because I want you to see it happen over here. So once I've done that, when I press Enter, watch what happens over here in the perspective view. I'll press Enter, and it creates, it takes this object, and it projects it out to where it intersects with this surface. And you see that that happens in more than one place, right? It happens every time it intersects the surface. So let's look at it in perspective view so we can see it. It intersects this surface right there. It intersects, oops, the inside surface there. And it also intersects next to the door right there. And it also intersects to the door right there. So let's do it again. I'm going to double click to get out to where I can see all the different views. I'm going to do a projection with this this time. So I'll go up into my curve, curve from objects, project, select surfaces to project onto. Right? Well, it's not that one. It's actually this one that I wanted. Now that brings up a good point. If you accidentally in Rhino make a, a selection that's incorrect, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard and you can actually deselect something. Oops, didn't like me there. It's probably because I'm working on a Mac instead. So uh, let's just try it again. Let's go to surface. No, excuse me, curve, curve from objects, project. And let me, it's not that one. There it is. There's the curve. Um, I'll hit enter surface would be here and I'll press enter and now it's going to create the lines there. Notice in this that it also created partial lines back here. Well in this the window doesn't actually occur there so I'm going to just select it. It's a perfect opportunity to do a left to right selection and then I can go ahead and press the delete key to make that go away. So I have the second set right here. Let's do it a third time for these two. So I'm going to go back into the front view. I'm going to go to curve, curve from objects, project, or just type project. I'll select both of those. I'll press enter. And then I'll select my object. There it is. And I'll press enter. And I'll get those windows projected out here as well. So I now have all the windows established in my scene, except for the one that goes right here. Now in that scenario, I already have the window right here. So I could easily select the curve. Actually, let's select both the inside and the outside. There they are. And I could do a mirror. So I can type in mirror or go to uh, transform and then mirror. And I can mirror it from the middle of this wall. I don't have a middle here because that's in the middle of the door. So I'll mirror from the middle of this wall. And I can create a second set right there. 
So the same techniques that applied when drawing flat also apply in three dimensions. So what I need to do now, though, is I need to actually cut through my wall. So I'm going to, I could just use this as a trim and I could cut through that way. But there's a better way of doing it in Rhino, and that's using a command called make hole. And so over here on the left side, there's two spheres that are kind of connected together. It's called a Boolean union. Below that are a bunch of the Boolean operations, which is essentially subtracting one object from another, adding one object to another, et cetera. But if we come all the way down here, I can choose this option, which is called make whole. Alternatively, I could type in make whole into my command line. So what it's going to ask for is a planar closed curve. So that would be this curve right here that we just created. I'll press Enter. Then it's going to say select surfaces or poly surfaces. Well, there's my poly surface right there. And a poly surface is basically just a group of surfaces. A little more sophisticated than that, but yes. I'll go ahead and press Enter when done. And it's going to ask me to select a depth point. Well, if I want to cut all the way through the wall, I need to snap to the inside of the wall, which is right there. And it will actually cut right through my wall for me. So I don't have to cut all the way through the wall. I could create a recess if I wanted to. So for example, let me go back to the make hole command right there, make hole, select planar closed curve. There it is. And then I'll press enter and then select poly surface. There's the poly surface. I'll press enter. And when I choose that depth point, I could pick like the midpoint and it creates one that doesn't punch all the way through. It's like a little niche. For what we're doing, we want to punch all the way through. So let me do that one more time. And actually, I'll do it with all three of these at once. So I'll go up to my um, make hole tools. Here we go. There's make hole. Select planar closed curves. We'll take this one. We'll take that one. And we'll take that one. I'll press Enter. Select surfaces, that one and that one. I'll press Enter. My depth point is going to be six inches, which is the inside of the wall. And now it's cutting through there. Well, it looks like maybe I had an issue with that wall. So let me undo it. Control Z. And I'll just do it here first. So make hole. There's my set it to the inside. There's the first one. Let me do these two. Make hole. There's my poly surface. And I want to snap to the inside. My guess is that I was slightly off on this wall. It must not be the correct thickness. So let me make hole. Press enter. Snap to the back. And now I've cut through that as well. So that's a far easier command than doing it manually. So I could do it manually. I could take this surface. I could type trim. I could select this and this as my cutting objects. I'll press Enter. And then I could actually just manually trim that surface. I would have to do it for the inside. Let me press Enter and come back here to this and this. And we're going to go up to Edit and then Trim again. Select these two as my cutting objects. And then I could trim this and that. So I can certainly create it that way. But in this scenario, you can see that it's actually hollow inside. So I would need to fill in what I cut through. So I can select those same two curves there and there. And I can go up to surface and then loft to actually fill those in. So the, the defaults are fine. We'll press Enter and OK. So it's two Enters. And we can actually fill those in. So this is a little bit more steps, a little bit harder to do than use the make hole. But I like to point out that there are both; they are both options. So I could select these two as well, there and there. And I could again uh, type loft. I'll press Enter, and then one more Enter, and that fills that one in as well. So let's come back over here. Let's do the make hole one more time. We'll choose make hole. Pick them both at the same time. 
we're going to go through these two objects. And this one may get tricky because I just trimmed it. Go ahead and say enter. My depth point is going to be the inside of the wall. And there it is. I was able to do it anyway. So what I'm asking you for today is to draw that elevation, to do the projection, and then to cut out the windows. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine looks. The windows could be different. But this is, again, this is about learning the process, learning how to work and manipulate with these. If you want to take it a step further, you could fill in the tops of the doorways. We could just use a box with this. I could go from here to here. And then I could come down to the same height as the window. Same thing, I can right click to repeat the last command or choose the box again, there and there. And I can fill that in one more time with the box there and there, and we can come down and snap to there. That just fills in the tops of my, my doors. This is fine, even though we see them as separate objects, when we go to do renderings later on, we can render so that the texture goes all the way across and you can't tell that they're different objects. So now that I have that established, that's really what our goal is for today, for today's exercise. I need to go ahead and capture this so that I can post it on the course website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my little, uh, where it says perspective, click the down arrow, and I'll come all the way down here into um, capture to file. And then I need to save this so I've got my perspective view. It's capturing my viewport. I'll go ahead and say, OK. And then I need to save it into my OneDrive account. So there it is in OneDrive. Let's go to today's folder. And there's 203. And we can just leave this as a capture. Or I could rename it and say, oops. 203 screen capture, and I'll go ahead and click on save. That JPEG is what you need to go ahead and post to the course website. So we can come over to the course website, following this all the way through here. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to come up here to the top, and I'll click on new, followed by post. And I would say this is uh, exercise 203. And I need to set that featured image. So I'll scroll down on the right side. I'll click on set featured image. We'll upload files. And this is that, that, that um, JPEG that I just saved. So let me get in here to my live demonstrations. And there's my screen capture. We'll go ahead and say open. There's my screen capture. We'll go ahead and set featured image. And then over here on the right side, under categories, I'm going to make sure I check for 203. Remember, it's exercise 203, not assignment 203. And then I can go ahead and click on publish. And that's effectively turning in my work. I can view it just to make sure it showed up by clicking on it. And there's my view. And I'm all good for exercise 203. So what I want you to work on uh, this week is exercise 203, and then we'll get to 204. In exercise 204, we're actually going to have an introduction to V-Ray. So a few of you had trouble with V-Ray. I know I got some emails about V-Ray not working. Um, don't worry. We're going to cover V-Ray in a lot more depth uh, next class. Uh, so the next lecture that we have, 204, we'll cover it in a lot more depth. So if, if you have screenshots, even without uh, the materials applied or whatever, I'm still fine with that for exercise 201. Uh, hopefully you were able to do the floor plans. I'm going to see the floor plans again here because you're going to be uh, working on them. I have my check-ins today, my first group of check-ins. A few people didn't get emails in the first class, so you should have gotten an email to your Insight email address. Um, so if you haven't checked, don't check in Canvas for a message, actually go to your Outlook email where you can see your Insight email and you should see your assigned time there. Um, if not, uh, you can stick around for a little bit and I'm happy to, to tell you uh, what your assigned time is. And I think that's it going forward. So unless anybody has questions, I'll let you go. I'll meet with my first group uh, in about 10 minutes. It'll be